started in live session and call the meeting to order. Beverly, just a note, we do have uh, David Helwig joining us as a guest today. I believe that's the only guest that we do have. Okay. Hello, David. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, so do you guys have roll call there? Yeah. yeah. So we just uh, quickly, we have all board members um, that are uh, active on the board with uh, obviously uh, um, Rod Buhaim still listed, but will be uh, absent and removed come the new year. Excellent. Uh, do I have a mover for approval of the minutes from the November 25th meeting? It's Kelly. Kelly uh, to move and a seconder. Lawrence, all in favor? Minutes carried. Uh, does anyone have a declaration of pecuniary interest today? Lawrence? Yes, I'm involved with the Beaver Fusion Marathon, which is on our um, minute, or sorry, it's on our agenda for today. So I'll excuse myself at the appropriate time. Excellent. Thank you for advising of that. And over to Richard for a financial update. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. So I, I, I guess from last meeting to now, not much has changed other than the city has agreed to forward uh, the balance. <laughs> I'll call it the balance. It's, uh, so right now they're going to transfer 732,000. I got to look at the email again, 732,510, which was the amount of funds that were generated by, I guess, you, what was it called, the DMF before. So the collections from the MAT funds are in excess of that now. So they will transfer that over sometime in December. And then the true up will happen uh, uh, in the new year. So that amount that, that's gonna be transferred uh, in December is $435,000. So if you go back and look at the balance sheet we had, it will add to that. So we're going to be close to a surplus of about a million one. And um, my estimate of additional funds that the city will contribute into the general fund would be another around $60,000. Um, the numbers for, so 732 is the minimum amount and it gets bumped by what the 10-year av average of the tourism receipts that occur over the last 10 years in Ontario. And those statistics just came out, I think last week, that which showed about a 4.8% increase on a 10-year average. So our, our funds get boosted by that increase. And so that's by my calculation, we'll end up with another $63,000 sometime in January or February when uh, the city gets around to doing that calculation. And I don't think there was any checks that were written, so. Okay, and the, those funds that you're speaking of are going into the general development fund and then where does the funds for the TDF play into that? Roughly, a if, true up. Uh, there will be a true up of that, and my guess is we're going to end up with MAT funds of in excess of just in excess of a million dollars. Um, so, roughly, there'll be a hundred thousand dollars that gets said to the TDF, and a hundred thousand dollars goes into the city pot. Rough okay. guess. Unless you disagree with me, Travis, on where we're going to end up, but I'm, I'm suggesting a million. Yeah, no, I agree. I put in, uh, so as of right now, we're at, uh, I think it's 883 as of October 30th. If I put uh, November, December numbers from last year, which is another 88,000, we'll be at 972. So I think we know we'll, uh, we'll beat those numbers. So yeah, I think you're, you're accurate. Yep, okay. 
Does anyone have questions for Richard with regards to the financials at this time? Okay, moving on to uh, new business, over to you, Travis or Alana for the uh, dashboard staff update. Okay, thanks Beverly. Um, so I think everybody's aware it's only been two weeks since our last meeting, so there's not gonna be a lot uh, by way of update, but just building off of um, Richard's update uh, and going back to our, our request from Don, and Don, will, uh, we will be including this in the dashboard uh, in January. But um, looking at the Tourism Development Fund, um, so as of uh, June of this year, uh, there was $450,830 in that fund. Um, between our commitments to NerdCon, uh, AMCO Conference, Can-Am Snowcross, the film and television marketing, and the downtown plaza, we've committed $177,000, sorry, $177,000. $500,000, um, 500, sorry. Uh, so remaining in terms of available funds at this point is 273,000. Um, worth noting uh, because um, the tour boat uh, operators requested that we hold off on their application. Um, so that did not go to council and that has not been included in the committed funds at this point. So if, um, that were to be approved uh, as per the council or uh, board resolution, uh, we would be removing another 125,000 out of the 273. Um, and those numbers don't include uh, the applications that we're going to be discussing today or any future application. Um, you know, we've obviously had a lot of outreach and uh, we've got, we know of some applications that are pending. Um, Beyond that, uh, just uh, quickly. Um, so we just concluded the Canadian Senior uh, Curling Championships. Uh, we had 112 participating curlers uh, from out of town. And then we had uh, on average 450 spectators uh, over the course of this, per day over the course of the six days. Um, and uh, really that, that's it in terms of an update. Um, you know, the, the remaining items are in the, the dashboard. And like I said, we just met two weeks ago. So there's not a lot of change there. Uh, unless Travis, anybody has... can, can I ask with regards to the curling, where did that fall short from because of the health restrictions and the, the restrictions with regards to spectators? Did we lose a lot of uh, potential on those spectator spectators and the curlers? Yeah. So spectator wise, we lost uh, 50%. 50%. Okay. Yeah. And then Beverly, just to add to that, we also lost um, the social elements that were included in that that would have benefited um, local attractions like the Bush Plane reception. And so there was other follow up beyond just the visitation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you because you would have lost uh, probably a, a substantial amount on there was three or four different events that they were that they had planned through that week. So yeah, they were they were all canceled to accommodate the, the social restrictions and then the spectator capacity was reduced to half. I ask a question. What's the Summer Moon Festival? Uh, the Summer Moon Festival is a public art and music festival. Um, so it's uh, started with the uh, development of the murals uh, in and around town, uh, which we're developing uh, as a product for a walking tour. But in 2019, it was a combination of the, uh, the murals and then uh, street festivals. So music and uh, kind of culinary with the street festivals for 2022 uh it'll also be um public art but we do have some more uh significant musical acts that are coming uh, and there'll be kind of a headlining event on uh on the saturday so it's it's uh marketed as a cross-cultural uh event with heavy emphasis on uh, the indigenous heritage of the communities and that's why you'll you'll notice that a lot of the murals are um from indigenous artists and then some of the bands that we uh, are looking at bringing in would be uh, indigenous musicians. So would this be a festival that, so it's had a history, so could we, could it apply for festival funding from Ontario? It, it uh, uh, could and has, the, the bulk of the funding right now is coming from the Indigenous Friendship Centre. Um, they've allocated a significant amount of money 
uh, to the event, and then uh, the partners are looking at other funding streams. Yeah, I guess that leads me into my other. <laughs> so, my a problem, I a problem that I I ran across, and and I've had discussions with Travis and Alana is there's 18 pages of festivals that Ontario supported. So 18 full pages, so calculate it out, there's 400 and some odd events. Not one event was supported in Sault Ste. Marie in 2021. So we've got a job to do to encourage people that are putting on festivals and events to apply for some funding and get some dollars out of Ontario. So I'll leave it at that. Any other board members have questions or comments with regards to the dashboard or staff updates? Okay, all good. Let's move into the uh, TDF applications. The first one that we have up is Thrive Tours and I understand Travis that they'll be doing a presentation. Uh, they will and Alana is uh, gonna tee that up. And yeah, I can take that. So. Um, Thrive Tours is our first application being made to the product development stream. So what we thought would be best for today is um, I will give an introduction and an overview of their application. And then what I'd like to do is um, have Brad and Amanda join us on screen to do a presentation. And they're aware that this is a, a public meeting. So feel free to ask questions and engage with them. Um, to, to further support their application. So I'm going to do an introduction, then we'll turn it over to them, um, and they will hop on the screen. Thanks, Alana. Okay, so Thrive Tours um, is an Indigenous owned and operated eco guided touring company that's located in Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, Brad Robinson and Amanda Cora uh, first operated in the Sudbury area, and then they moved to the Sioux last December after they saw an ideal fit for their tours during their many kayak trips up to Sault Ste. Marie on the St. Mary's River in Brokat. In uh, spring, they successfully completed and launched their, um, their operations with eco-guided cultural tours. And they're offering services to guests who are seeking culturally inspired adventure who want to reconnect with nature. Thrive Tours achieved a great success with the delivery of their high quality experiences through guests with multiple testimonials attached to their application. And they had many sellout dates in the summer 21 season for their services. After operating uh, their summer operation, Thrive Tours has expanded their, their company to work in fall and winter to capitalize on the growing demand for Indigenous tourism and outdoor adventure seekers. Both Brad and Amanda are fully certified guides. They've adopted a zero footprint objective so that their surroundings will be clean and sustainable for generations to come. Uh, in a time when the tourism industry has been hard hit, Thrive Tours managed to open and sustain operations during the pandemic and position themselves well for continued success. Uh, they've immersed themselves into Sault Ste. Marie, made strong connections with the Indigenous community, and have worked diligently to meet the demands of the tourism industry. In their first eight months of operation, Thrive has received four Tours in Ontario um, TIO Awards, the Tourism Industry Resiliency Awards, one for sustainability resource, one for innovation, another one for Indigenous tourism operator, and another one for Indigenous um, marine operator through TAYO. Their promotional video was also selected as the promo video for the Ontario Tourism Gala. They were a recipient of a SCODE Award in 2021 for innovation, and also received a Spark Innovation Award um, in 2021 for the operation of their company. Their ask today is for $47,396 to support their vision of ecotourism and the expansion of their business to four seasons with a focus on a purchase of uh, electric snowmobiles to deliver eco tours. Specifically, Thrive is looking to purchase two Taiga electric snowmobiles to be able to provide guests with a unique winter experience that delivers on the mandate of sustainable ecotourism. In their application, Thrive completed and submitted a professionally prepared business plan by N1 Solutions, outlining a plan for growth and sustainability, 
a complete market analysis and a SWOT analysis, competitive advantages, an operational budget, goals and objectives, a supporting letter from Cambrian College for Research and Development for Electric Snowmobiles, a supporting letter from Chief Sayers of Batchawan First Nation. Um, their evaluation was completed against the TDF application and included a review of visitation um, in overnight stays, economic impact, uh, the advancement of tourism offerings, and how this aligns with the city's reputation of a first class experience, uh, exposure, creation, and retention of jobs, and how this fills a gap in the tourism sector. We also reviewed their uh, application against the metrics internally uh, to look at how this supports product development with indicators including does this align with the strengths of our community? Is this product a destination driver? Is it ready, market ready? And does it support the growth of tourism in our priority seasons? What we found in our application is several salient points that I'd like to share. Um, Thrive Tours is an outdoor focused, nature-based ecotourism operator, which fits well with the identified priorities to support the positioning of Sault Ste. Marie as an outdoor adventure community. Uh, the operation is Indigenous owned and sustainable, which supports our priority to grow and expand Indigenous tourism experiences. The purchase of electric snowmobiles would allow Thrive to become the first out of the gate with electric eco-friendly products, which is extremely timely and creates an excellent opportunity for product growth and marketing for Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, their customer reviews have been extremely positive, which supports the position of Sault Ste. Marie as a first-class destination and visitor experience. Uh, the operation of Thrive also aligns well with the city's priority of downtown activation in the summer with their kayak tours on the waterfront and their partnership with the Waterfront Adventure Center. And within their first year of operation, Brad and Amanda have brought forward uh, their demonstrated success by receiving the six awards that I just mentioned in a very short time. And winter product is a priority for rounding up four season offerings in Sault Ste. Marie, and it attracts a different audience than the current um, attractions that we currently market. Thrive has presented a professional business plan that details their operations and their growth strategies over the next five years, including the addition of jobs within the community. Um, what we would like to do is put forward a recommendation um, for the board to consider supporting Thrive they are here to come on and do a presentation and encourage an open conversation between the board and the operators if you have any questions related to their business. How's that sound? Excellent. Thank you very much, Alana. Uh, do we have Brad and Amanda ready to go then? Yeah, I just have to excuse myself for a second and call them and get them to log in. Perfect. I will mention that joining them um, will be their Indigenous Tourism Ontario mentor, Conrad Bobby Wash. He will be joining as well to answer any questions related to the support of Indigenous Tourism Ontario. Okay, they're, uh, they're going to start connecting, so just give us a second. While we're waiting for them, um, I will make note, uh, we have been tracking the analytics on our website specific to um, the marketing of Thrive. And we've had over um, 500 referrals through our website um, to Thrive Tours through our marketing and promotion. So we are seeing a continued interest in the operation. Um, I just thought that was a nice detail to, to add in there. Yeah, no, excellent. Mm -hmm. They should be very proud of their success. Wow, that's really amazing. Yeah, they've done extremely well. I'm curious to know what their target market is. 
Yeah, they will, they will definitely speak to that uh, in their presentation. Feel free to ask Kelly. I don't know if they're having issues. Did they get the old, um, the old um, link? Entry? Uh, no, they have the new one. I was talking to them right before I came up. Okay. They're, they're coming. They're messaging me that they're logging in. So we're just waiting for it to connect. Might be the winds yeah. blowing, blowing everybody's houses away these days. There is apparently some power outages throughout the. Uh, there we go. The city. So. Hi guys. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 How you doing? Oops. Here, let me just uh, do something. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We're looking forward to your presentation. Well, Thanks. we are looking forward to doing it for you. <laughs> All right. I will uh, quickly make a, a quick introduction here. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce Amanda Cora and Brad Robinson, co-owners and operators of Thrive Tours, to talk to you today about their application to the TDF, um, and I will turn it over to you. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> I'm Amanda. And I'm Brad. And we're really excited to be presenting today. Yes, this is great. This is a great day. Um, okay, so uh, let's jump right into it. Um, I'm going to share my screen and uh, where, whereabouts am I sharing this here? Sorry, just going to double click on this. All right, so I'm going to share my screen here and, uh, and then we'll work from there. Um, okay. All right, can you all see that? Yeah, we're good here, I think. Anyone having any issues? Okay, cool. Um, so let me just uh, play. All right. Um, okay. So uh, just like Amanda said, we are uh, Thrive Tours together. Um, we're going to be talking about our Thrive Tours and Taiga Motors um, partnership and, uh, and offerings here in, in the suit. So I'm just going to uh, do this and thank you for being patient. And uh, we're going to start off with a little video. Oops. Go backwards. <laughs> All the Zoom stuff. You know, yeah. I know how to do it. I think so. That's right. Let's just do this. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to do this in edit mode, it sounds like. Bear with us. Okay, let's leave it as is. Great. Well, that's just a little intro to Tega Motors. If you haven't seen uh, snowmobiles that are electric, it's very quiet and uh, really exciting to be looking at that. Okay, so about us, I will discuss more about the uh, about the snowmobiles uh, uh, as as our presentation goes forward. Um, my name is Brad Robinson, and Amanda Cora is, is my partner, and we both um, have uh, unique uh, unique experiences that that will be. 
uh, very instrumental in regards to bringing forth these uh, tourism opportunities to the area. Uh, I myself is uh, I'm Haudenosaunee, and I am, uh, which means uh, Iroquois. And I'm from Oneida Nation of the Thames. And I'm uh, my Indigenous heritage is Abenaki from the Quebec region. Um, so it's and also my children are Ojibwe from uh, this area. So it's been a really big part of my life to share the uh, culture and and raise them in, in that way as well. So it, that's been um, a little bit about us and in, in uh, why it's so important to us. Mm -hmm. We both share uh, not only Indigenous roots, but we also share uh, the passion for outdoors and all things outdoors. Uh, we love the winter and we love to show people the winter offerings of this area and we would love to bring uh, these uh, these offerings to the Sioux uh, with your help. Okay so we're uh, thriving in the winter. We always uh, thrive in the winter. <laughs> um, as you can see this is an image of, uh, uh, of our snowshoeing efforts. Uh, last year we weren't able to do snowshoeing but this year uh, we're going to be doing quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're really excited. We actually just won an award to get some winter products uh, for snowshoeing. And we've developed some products on uh, Whitefish Island. So teaching the history and doing an education program there, as well as other areas and working with First Nations here. Um, it's been well received and a lot of people want to learn about how to even get outdoors in the winter. So we're really meeting people where they're at. And it seems to be something that people uh, really want to do. Um, so bringing Tega Motors and, and uh, the electric snowmobiles is the next step for bringing people um, outside of Sault Ste. Marie coming in to, to make this a destination. Mm -hmm. What is a Indigenous ecocultural tourism? Uh, it is providing quality and sustainable tourism that adopts a zero footprint philosophy as well as it's an Indigenous, uh, brings Indigenous values and real history from the area and a shared and followed on each and every tour. Um, respect to the land and the people who have lived here since time immemorial. Um, we, uh, we have full support of, of the uh, Batchewana First Nation uh, and uh, we have yet, yet to, uh, to have real meaningful conversations with uh, Garden River, but uh, that's something that's, that's sure to follow. Um, but that is a, a base of what we do is we uh, share that real history and it's very important to us to talk about the philosophies of how ecotourism can be sustainable and can also drive in new people to the area. And we're extremely ex excited about what the opportunities will, uh, will hold for, for us in the area. So our ask, uh, specifically we are asking for, um, let me just uh, minimize this so I can see, oops, uh, what, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I can't see where my cursor is. Um, anyhow, the, uh, our ask is, uh, we'll, the funds will go towards the, uh, the purchase of two Taiga electric snowmobiles, uh, valued at $47,396. We could also use this fund to support greater, uh, a greater ask from, uh, yeah, it's not, um, no. <laughs> uh, okay so we're trying to minimize because we can see everybody on the right hand side and it's kind of uh it's it's kind of going in front of our <laughs> our screen but you can see it on your side uh so it's also going to be uh used to help us bolster what we are going to be asking from nohfc and fednor fednor and wabatech um that is uh to be said that obviously it, it's going to require more infrastructure in order to uh, do a, a full tour as we would like to acquire four to six nomads uh, as well as trailers and nomads uh, are just a part like a, a version of those of those snowmobiles they're the more utilitarian ones they're uh, not the speed demons but that's not really what we're going for we're going for the ones that are um, are very utilitarian because then we can actually place um, you know things and we can haul things into the into the to the bush or into a place that uh, that, that we're going to be bringing our tours to um, and then uh, do it uh, with you know with with uh, very little effort because it has more storage capacity. Uh, we're also going to need a, a trailer and, and, and some other, um, you know, electric facilities in order to uh, generate uh, power for these. Uh, you can actually, there's a lot of different ways in which you can charge them, uh, which is great, but we're actually working with, uh, with, uh, with um, Canada or College, or, or Cambrian College, I meant, and uh, Cambrian College uh, are going to be helping us develop this, uh, this trailer that will uh, that will actually house uh, electrical uh, charging jacks, and uh, and their research and development department is uh, is another one that uh, that we're working with, 
and uh, they'll be helping us with the accessories for these uh, to support these vehicles. What will come out of, out of this funding, Amanda? Yeah, create new interest in the area for winter tourism and create new jobs jobs for local guides and support. Uh, we're really interested also in just bringing out some of the local uh, Indigenous communities to be able to also uh, be able to have mentorship and internship with the, with our company. Um, we want to enhance all, our cultural offerings in the area. Uh, there's been a lot of um, interest and we've done language or uh, cultural camps. We brought youth out. We've worked with Indian Friendship Centre here doing uh, camp programs and uh, also doing things with Oklahoma University and their student associations and uh, bringing people out with the cultural um, teachings. They really want to learn that education um, and also helping Sioux St. Marie provide uh, this as a tourism destination for winter winter eco power uh, sports. Um, I think it, we're getting, um, it's a new um, demographic that are, is going to be interested in this kind of offering. Um, and it's a renewed interest to sustainability for environment and uh, in innovation. Hmm. Um, so I think you know, that's really important uh, part of what this is going to do for this community. Mm -hmm. A little bit more about Amanda. She actually, uh, uh, she actually developed um, uh, an ATV touring business in the past uh, and, it, and it's quite successful. Uh, she stepped out of that uh, in order to come to eco uh, sports uh, because that was where her uh, passion lied. So, um, so it, uh, so this is where we're, we're coming from. Um, definitely uh, to more sustainable type, uh, type power sports. Hey, Thrive Tours, we um, had some lots of early successes. Uh, we were really excited to be here in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, when uh, Sault Ste. Marie reached out to me, they had known me from my past business and how uh, we provided really great uh, experiences for our guests. Um, they uh, invited us to come and take a look at Sault Ste. Marie and we were, you know, really impressed and loved the, how welcome they were to us. So uh, when we were able to open was actually uh, not until July of this year mm -hmm. um, and we've had over 200 guests just this summer and most of them are coming from southern Ontario. We have newcomers to Canada joining us. Um, and our programs are also being accessed by the First Nation communities, not only locally, but even um, just in Northern Ontario, they're reaching out to us to come and run programs for them. Um, and like I was saying before, the uh, Algoma University and um, actually and to uh, well, we partnered with uh, Sioux College early on mm -hmm. uh, to access their waterfront center and they also have been in talks with us about what we can do for uh the indigenous studies program and beyond uh with the with the college and uh yeah just that we launched in july which yeah, is pretty amazing which is <laughs> awesome yeah i mean you know obviously we we adhere to the restrictions and 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 to the protocols uh, we do that by sanitizing everything, keeping social distance. And this is actually a really great way in which us, uh, for us to do that, uh, because when you're out in the open, uh, in the open environment, we, uh, we, can, we can manage uh, groups uh, quite well that way. And we tend to do it um, as, as, uh, as best as we know how. Um, and we definitely are very uh, thoughtful in regards to uh, making sure everyone's safe. Uh, from that uh, perspective, we have also uh, garnered five star reviews on Google uh, reviews, which is, uh, which is you know, a good, uh, you know, a good thing to, to have, obviously. Um, our, uh, our innovation awards uh, and and in tourism uh, are peer reviewed and and uh, it was amazing to be able to capture four of those which are is pretty uh, pretty unheard of apparently. Um, okay, so we're also the uh, Scotia winners. Um, this uh, tourism innovation lab uh, also awarded us a uh, an award that would help us uh, purchase um, the uh, the TP. Yeah, the TP outside. Uh, yeah, and a, a couple of things we actually have a, a TP that we can use for our programming as well as a few other uh, offerings uh, and it's just a, a good opportunity to to do this and i'm going to show you a, a quick video uh and this will give you a better idea as to what we've done in the past this was showcased in ottawa actually at the tourism summit Amanda and Brad, I think if it's not playing on the slide deck screen, you might have to share uh, the other screen. We're not able to see the video. Not a problem. Screen. Yeah, thank you for letting us know that. I appreciate it. Got it. I'm gonna re I'm gonna re rewind that. 
thank, thank you, you for letting us know. How do you see it now? Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. And can you hopefully you can hear it? Too. Yeah. Just let us know. Can you hear that as well? We could hear volume initially. Oh. Great. Yeah. Okay. That's great, Brad. Thank you very much. Okay, here we are. Okay. Oh, Conrad's there. Now. Oh, Conrad's here. Absolutely. <laughs> ah, great. Excellent. Put on your uh, your uh, camera if you can, Conrad. I'm gonna share our screen again. Okay, I'm gonna share our screen again. Okay. Ah, miigwech. I'm gonna share the uh, presentation now. There it is. Give me a second here. Just a PowerPoint. There. Okay. There's a lot of a uh, lot of moving parts. Thank you for being so patient. Okay, great. You gotta share it probably. Yeah. Can you see? Oh, hold on. Okay. Share. 
How did you get the weather to cooperate with you in so many pictures? <laughs> oh, you know what? That's a, it, was, it wasn't easy, but we asked for help and we put down our SEMA. <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So Conrad, go ahead and tell. <laughs> go. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Uh, so no. Conrad uh, is, uh, is is our that's good. no I've been listening I've been listening I just got okay good 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 okay and he's our indigenous business advisor he's also our support mentor and advocate and he's been working with us since uh, April 2000, 2021 uh, you can tell them a little bit more about yourself Conrad okay my my name is uh, Conrad Bobby Wash uh, I'm you know I was in the Catholic school board I coached that you probably won't believe this but Sir James Dunn that was a long time ago <laughs> no Sir James Dunn the Sioux Collegiate what Rick Partridge said, that I know that whole area. I've had, <laughs> I've had a, and I went to school across the river at the Lake State, got my uh, business sports management degree over there. But anyways, uh, and uh, I've been very interested since I come from education. I spent 30 years in education being an education director. And uh, I took on this new role to uh, enhance uh, our native communities, both on and off reserve. And I came across uh, Brad and Amanda with their unique product offering, but more importantly, they were ready to be launched. Uh, they had a, a strong background in social media, which we need if you're gonna bring people, if you're gonna create the traffic, you're gonna need a strong social media advocate, either yourself or job it out, what they're able to do it themselves. Uh, and I suspect now after this, this little <clears throat> process we've had over the summer, that it's only gonna multiply. Because the audiences are what they call micro audiences. We have people in Europe that want to do this. We have people in our own native community that want to do this that have never grown up on the reserve. We have Métis, the Métis communities now coming on board. Uh, we, we haven't even tapped into school boards yet uh, of offering uh, outdoor education. And I think uh, within three to five years, maybe even 10 years, you're going to see uh, uh, companies like Brad's uh, and a lot more companies in and around uh, urban areas, offering this to our children, offering this to our schools, whether it's, uh, you know, elementary, uh, you know, you can do primary education, uh, junior education, intermediate education, senior education. They all have a component of outdoor education. So uh, Brad and the, Amanda, their product is uh, positioned just right. It's just going through all the, uh, examining all the opportunities and uh, will be it in funding or, uh, organizational structure to other organizations uh, that they're going to be successful. I, 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 I've, uh, I think I'm correct in saying that uh, when I started out with them, uh, it didn't look too good. <laughs> but now it, it, we're very successful. They won four awards at the uh, uh, the industry trade show in, in uh, Ottawa, uh, which was uh, tremendous, one of the top winners there. And uh, they're well respected in the industry, and I'm just pleased to be working along with uh, this group in this part of Ontario. Now I have another group in uh, northwestern Ontario too that are winning awards at nationally, and uh, they're into a market uh, uh, that comes from the United States, what they call post-secondary school studies, where people come up and they study the land, they study the ecotourism. And I think uh, that'll be one of the markets that will Brad will be going into, and of course you know that. My background is uh, finding markets that are going to fit with Brad's business and Voyager uh, tours in uh, Northwestern Ontario, that uh, there's a big uh, demand for ecotourism education, outdoor education. And it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, highly risky. It could be just what they're doing. They're taking people on the, uh, you know, the canoe kayaks introduction and then uh, walking and hiking tours up to the Algoma Highlands. Uh, uh, we have we stand at a great time, a great nexus, uh, when we can take all these uh, opportunities and offer them to a larger community. And uh, Canadians or international or Americans, uh, you know, uh, this this is the time to do it. Uh, they have the right supports in place. And people say, well, I'm going to start this business, but the, I don't have any money from chief and council or a band office or. Uh, the province or the feds. Well, there's being more money, more money is being uh, shuttled into uh, indigenous uh, uh, eco development tourism. And we, we support tourism. Our biggest role is to develop markets, develop products, and to develop partnerships with uh, uh, indigenous folks that are trying to 
that are going to reach the mainstream market and become sustainable. And that's the thing we work on. How do we make this sustainable? Of course, we're doing it right now. We're <laughs> doing it with uh, Brad making a great presentation and uh, to the city to get on board. And, and I said, no, you have to partner with the city, partner with Sioux College, partner with all these Aboriginal groups, partner with the Boy Scouts, because you have to get uh, media out there and uh, marketing and people will hear about your product. And with social media, that even brings it up a notch higher because when this catches on, uh, you know, I'm uh, uh, with the Export Development Canada, I'm working with them too in the Ottawa office, in Toronto office to bring their product, Brad's product to the world market. Uh, and we suspect, uh, I was just in Toronto on Monday, Tuesday, Monday, and uh, talking about this and uh, addressing an audience that we have to start as indigenous folks to bring our products uh, internationally, nationally, and uh, locally to help our local economies and to create uh, a large education component about the misunderstanding of the Hollywood portrait of uh, Indigenous folks to a real life portrait. We have uh, great people, Young and um, uh, Brad and Amanda, you know, they're, they're okay. entrepreneurs, they're doing great stuff. But we have doctors, lawyers, all that stuff. People Perfect. need to hear. Connor, can, can, I, can, I, uh, can I just uh, sub I I appreciate all of the, you know, the information here is great, but we'll kind of move on to, cause they, they're going to have some questions for us. So just okay. move forward from that. And, uh, and we still have just a, a little bit to go on our slides. So uh, we can put them in later. Sorry, sure. hey, yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks, Conrad. Appreciate it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so we're going to also uh, just show you this, uh, this next slide here and okay. Give you an idea as to what, Exactly this tie up. It's, it's just the intro. Hey, Snow Tracks YouTubers, have we got some news for you today? We're coming live from uh, central Ontario in a top secret location because what we're going to show you today, nobody's supposed to be able to see. So you're like among the first people on earth next to us who are going to get to see a real Taiga electric snowmobile. And this is a pretty exciting day for the industry because this is not just some cobbled up thing that, that's being brought to the market. This is a beautifully finished, beautifully styled, well-manufactured production snowmobile. Now, these units that we have here today are pre-production prototypes, but they are in the truest sense production snowmobiles. And they are going to have uh, quite an effect on the market. And I, I want to talk to you today about... Uh, some of the features, some of the unique things about this. But the first thing I'm going to tell you is I had this much expectation this morning when we got to ride this, zero. I have come away and I can honestly say that this isn't just good. This is really good and it's fun. So uh, you'll see as we continue to talk about it. So what do we got? This is the Taiga. This is a uh, completely custom built for electric power snowmobiles, not some cobbled together other snowmobile. We were kind of cynical six months or a year ago. We said, ah, it's just, you know, they made a deal with Skidoo and bought a bunch of tons and tunnels and they put their motor in. Uh-uh, this is its own vehicle. This is, everything is unique, right down to the drivetrain, uh, to the running boards. I know that you- Okay, so that gives you an idea. Taiga um, also has their own set of, uh, of charge ports that they're developing with a company called ABB which is an international company. And you can see underneath this, all of those charging ports right there. Uh, can you see me? Yeah, probably see me zoom. Uh, all of these, uh, these, little, uh, these little icons here are all charge points. But if you take a look here, uh, they, they have expected charge ports that are coming here to, uh, to the Sioux area. So this is really exciting for us. And actually we are in conversations with them uh, through, uh, oops, uh, through um, we actually had a conversation with the city and uh, ABB and us about this time last year. And they're really excited to see what we're doing here. And they are absolutely uh, thrilled as to what we're, what we're looking to propose because it's not just the winter offerings. We're also looking for summer offerings and they also have winter or uh, summer um, uh, personal watercraft available and they're gonna have side-by-sides and it's gonna go on. So I think this is a great Canadian story. Uh, that, that's worth, uh, worth telling and sharing. And then I, I believe also that uh, Thrive Tours is also a great Canadian store as well. Um, so here's some of our partners. Uh, we have Indigenous Tours Monterey, as you saw. 
Uh, we also have a, a partnership with Delta Hotels here in Sault Ste. Marie. We also have uh, Tourism Sault Ste. Marie is, is, has been a, a great advocate for us and, uh, and does share a lot of what we do with, uh, with the public, uh, which is uh, very, uh, we were very appreciative of. Um, Sioux College also, we have utilization of the Waterfront Adventure Center throughout the year. So that's a, an important thing. And uh, Water Tower Inn, this is gonna be a key for us in, in terms of winter sports. They also do have the charging capabilities to be able to uh, charge there and, and then and go uh, with the snowmobiles as well. And I believe that, um, that uh, that uh, JJ is going to be super interested in what we have to offer once we get it. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing the screen and then we're going to get to, uh, to your questions. Yes. Sorry. Uh, Lawrence. Hi guys. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say thanks for the great presentation. Thank you very much really nice to see uh tour companies start up and uh i uh, i work with sioux college i work at the waterfront center nothing Perfect. but positive comments about your company and you two personally i ran into you at joe sports the other day and uh, i didn't introduce myself yes. <laughs> you, you took your time friendly. you're very patient <laughs> thank you you're so friendly and um so I just wanted to say uh, thank you and introduce myself and um, I really appreciated your, your presentation. Uh, my question is, <clears throat> the, the snowmobiles, um, you're looking for two right now? Well, okay. <laughs> uh, we would love to get four to six. Actually, this is a, that's, that's the, our ultimate goal is to actually have a fleet of these that go out. Um, I think that obviously taking, uh, you know, taking one offs is, is, you know, is doable. We can certainly um, have, you know, have one, but I definitely want to be able to have, actually, this is a, this is a qu question that we would like to, uh, to offer the Kinsmen because we know that uh, they're close to the uh, Highlands, the, uh, the, the uh, Hiawatha Highlands, and they own that. I think, I believe they own that park. We just actually talked to a gentleman, uh, Ryan Walker, who works there. And he said, yeah, th that would be a great place. I, I suggest, I said, well, what do, what do you think of maybe even using that as, a, as the, the central location? Because it's so close to the, uh, the snowmobile hub. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, and he said, yeah, that would be a great location. So, but we have to have products in order to bring, or at least say, I've got, we've got commitment to be able to bring uh, several of these products to there. We can showcase the Hiawatha Highlands. We can get off, we can do snowshoeing. We can do a, a round of, of, uh, of snowmobiling as well. And, uh, and I think that anyone who's uh, conscientious about the, uh, about the sound pollution that's happening, as well as the actual pollution that's happening with the carbon dioxide, and uh, knowing that, that snowmobiles themselves have no catalytic converter and essentially they, they spew out, <laughs> so to speak, uh, an equivalent to 40 cars um, each, uh, that that's caused a concern. And I'm not saying that, you know, I mean, I've, I've owned snow, regular snowmobiles and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I'm just saying that we, as an eco tourism company, we want to change the, uh, the, the dialogue in regards to that. We definitely want to, uh, to, to move the needle when it comes to adoption and early adoption. We actually just got an email just from Tyga this morning. In fact, that gave us the opportunity to purchase more of these snowmobiles uh, pre pre-order them at the at the price that they came in at 2000 uh it was 18 2019 is what is where they uh, allowed you to start to pre-order them and they're actually going to honor the exact price even though inflation i mean that the, the the actual products themselves will actually go up in price they're going to honor our price they're going to lock it in regardless they actually they're there themselves are, are building a two, uh, 350 million dollar production facility to uh, actually uh, to, to facilitate the production of these throughout the, the world. So uh, so we're kind of jumping on the right time and they are super excited. They, in fact, will even fly over. They said uh, on our Zoom call with the city uh, last year, they said that they would even fly over and make a big media thing. And uh, because obviously, uh, guess who the market is they want? They want the United States. And we're the closest to the United States. And they obviously are very committed to making a great Canadian brand. And that's what we, uh, we love to help them with. Awesome. Great. I might be able to help you out with the, the Kinsman Park. Uh, maybe if we get our new building we'll, oh, uh, uh, on the board there. So I'll be in touch with you on that. Perfect. Thank you. I was wondering who to contact, yeah. but uh, perfect. Thanks, Thank you very much. Yes, uh, Don. Yeah, I have a quick question just about the, the machine itself. Um, okay. what, what's the uh, 
expected range on a battery charge? Oh, thanks for asking. In fact, that's something that I should have re really placed in there. But uh, the expected range, the long range version, there's there's kind of like uh, there's 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 different motors, different uh, battery capacities. The long range version, which would be a hundred up to one hundred and thirty four kilometers per charge. And that is a, that's a pretty amazing feat. Uh, they actually do that through battery uh, heating management. And they, uh, they keep the batteries hot with a, with a thermal management system. So you can actually go out minus 40 degree weather. You can literally just step on it and, and go. And uh, it'll go through a crawl mode uh, initially to, to heat up the batteries. But as soon as, and that should only take uh, under five minutes. And, uh, and then you can go off. And you don't have to worry about like regular snowmobiles. If you did that, and this is what search and rescue people or, or uh, you know, organizations find out that they jump on and they can actually blow an engine because of, uh, you know, that's, that's a, that's a problem. There's zero maintenance, zero, uh, zero uh, winterizing. You can essentially just finish using them, wash them off, put them in storage, bring them out next year and go. So for as a, as a tourism operator, that's perfect for us. Okay. Now what's, what, how long does it take to like you know say you you run the hundred and some yeah. uh, kilometer how long does it take to charge it back to full capacity thank you very much uh, for asking um the uh the charge uh, depends on what type of uh, input you have uh, uh or output i meant uh you can either have an ac output which is uh, which will be able to charge it in up to f like uh the, the fastest charging you can do uh would be just a few hours uh uh through ac uh two i, I think it's two hours uh, on the charger, you know, like, like the, the car chargers that you'll see at the, you know, Esso station or, I mean, the Petro Canada station or, or, uh, you know, pretty much anywhere. Actually, the municipality has, I believe, some uh, that are located in different areas. Uh, but there's also a 30 minute, uh, 30 minute charge option uh, for the, uh, the, the, the stage three charging. Which is the uh, which is the supercharging? That's what Tesla's using, and essentially the network that they're that they're putting out is going to have those superchargers built in. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna be talking with them to put those superchargers here in town. Potentially put uh, it, it depends on the uh, the infrastructure. Obviously, it takes a lot of electricity in order to to get in. So any any place that has welding and uh, whatever you know like you know heavy equipment uh, will be able to do the supercharging. But a regular person uh, that that has a, a house you know a a, a hundred amp uh, you know, uh, circuit waiver can charge it, uh, just in a few hours, uh, and AC regular AC plug, like the 120 volt, you can just charge it overnight and then you're ready to go in the morning. Okay. Now I know you mentioned, uh, you, you were working on a partnership with the college about some portable trailer, which I'm assuming is going to work off like light uh, solar panels or anything like that. Well, you know what the funny thing is, is uh, you can charge it a bit. It obviously the solar panels will take quite a while to charge. You can certainly trickle charge with the solar pa solar panels. Uh, you can charge batteries and then you can charge it off with batteries. Definitely. Um, what what we're suggesting is that uh, the Cambrian College R and D, which is amazing, actually they just just signed. They they well, you probably saw that that uh, that letter come in of support. Um, they want to help. They're actually talking with Tyga to produce accessories for those vehicles. Um, and one of the suggestions that we had was we want to get a trailer that's fully connected so that when we charge it into one of these DC ports, it could be distributed amongst all of the, uh, the, the machines at once. So they're actually going to be uh, developing those infrastructures for Taiga because obviously Taiga is so, uh, so focused on producing the machines themselves. But the external, uh, they're actually going to be doing the accessories for them. So specifically to, to the tourism industry, we're going to need certain accessories that actually uh, Cambrian College R and D is going to be working with us as a uh, as a model essentially and as research uh, to as to what uh, what the technologies we're going to need to implement. We'd even like to be able to have to be able to tap in kind of like the Ford F one hundred and fifty Lightning. Uh, you can tap into the electricity uh, for your power uh, tools, like your um, electric power tools and, and and even household power tools as well. Because I'll tell you, like I know I wouldn't want to be waiting a couple hours at minus forty recharging my snow machine. No, I no, definitely, here. yeah, like thirty minutes. Uh, if we can get those DC uh, charges in here, thirty minutes is not. You can have lunch and then go right out. You got an extra two hours. Now the only thing I, I would comment it, and because I'm very interested in um, electric technology, right, electric cars and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, I don't own one, and I don't intend to in the in the next near term. Uh, but I guess the challenge is, is I, I would probably uh, be careful of trying to promote it as uh, zero emissions. 
Because mm-hmm. unless you're using clean energy to charge the batteries, yeah. like if you're using coal power, electricity, to, you know, you're not mm-hmm. really, you know, it, it's it's kind of a yeah a hidden way. We understand right? where you're coming from. I, I definitely, uh, I've thought about that as well. Um, we're looking at the, uh, the actual, um, well, we're looking at what we're doing to the environment that we're in at that, that particular time. Obviously, we can do it uh, many, we, we can do it human power, which would be absolutely uh, zero in that particular uh, situation. But we understand that it takes certain, uh, certain um, uh, products in order to, uh, to, to build electricity. We understand that. Um, we are also um, cognizant of the fact that hydro hydropower is also some of the things that uh, that uh, that also generates power. And um, and I believe um, uh, Lawrence, uh, the um, the Kinsmen, do they own hydropower electricity or generation electricity facilities? Yes, we have a hydroelectric dam on site, and we sell directly back into the grid. Okay. Uh, but Sault Ste. Marie is essentially one hundred percent renewable energy because of the um uh because of our power dam yeah so that's that's really what we're going towards we understand that information and we understand that uh that there are other ways in other cities and municipalities that aren't doing that uh we uh, feel that Sault Ste. Marie is great uh, is a great uh hotbed to promote these type of products because we are doing that with hydroelectric uh, electricity it, don't, don't get me wrong but I totally 100 percent support what you guys do uh, I've shared uh, I've shared some stuff with some you know big city contacts that I have, especially some of the things that we're, we're doing through uh, tourism through Saint Marie, and you know uh, I, I think the biggest feedback, and I think what you guys have been doing is you know they're not just looking at the experiences; they actually want to be able to sign up for a tour. Exactly. Right? So they can you know they got the you know the, the, most recently I, I, I had the um, one of our a uh, folk from our franchisee, uh, you know, I, and, I, and he said, he goes, yeah, you know what? You know, I don't have time to plan things, but it'd be great to just be able to book a tour to say, like, you know, like you guys do, right? Like, you know, get on the kayak canoe or whatever it is plan for you, the, you know, and, and it's all ready to go. Right. So um, I just, as I said, like, you know, yeah. it be interesting because I know that with the electric technologies, it's relatively new. So, you know, I, I wouldn't want to see you guys uh, hit a bump in the road while you guys are uh, trying to do something great. Absolutely, no, we we totally understand your uh, your sentiment, uh, Don. I think it's important for us to uh, to re- to understand how how electricity comes about, and uh, but definitely renewable energy is the way to go. If we did have solar, like an array of solar panels, we can tap into that. We definitely will, uh, and and uh, you know, with uh, with Helene, uh, we might might be able to do that. Who knows? Okay, yes, Joseph. Uh, Just a a basic business plan. Are you gonna have a physical location where you have a head office, people be in touch with you and so on? Yeah. And if so, where would that be? Mm -hmm. Assuming that you get approval for the the machines, where, where will you be set up? Okay, well, that's a great question. Uh, we have year-round access to the Waterfront Adventure Center. We certainly can house them within that until we get a potential deal with uh, with Kinsman. And we also have storage. We have a uh, we we use uh, Vol- Voltra. Yeah. Yeah. So we can we can we can store them in you know in uh, secured locations. Obviously, they're high uh, high value. Um, uh, machinery and we definitely will want to protect them. Um, we do have uh, we have an enclosed trailer that we can lock. There's different uh, various uh, ways in which we can do it. In terms of a um, an actual like a like a physical uh, you know come to our office at certain at a certain place because we're mobile and we actually um, uh, cater to uh, to visitors that that come in from you know, from anywhere really, uh, we, we need to meet them where they're at. A lot of times we, we actually, because we don't actually transport people to the place that, uh, that, that we're going. It's the reason why we want to be able to have access to something that's really easy to get to and easy to locate. And that's kind of what we're thinking about with the, uh, Hiawatha Highlands is where we maybe 
potentially could have uh, some, you know, um, uh, Thrive Tours, uh, you know, booth or, or, or location there that, that we could uh, potentially use. But I, I don't want to speak out of turn. And I certainly would love well, to. Go I, there. I guess I guess what I'm saying is this. What what time frames are you looking at in terms of actually setting up, getting the machines and so forth? Sure. Um, we're in we're in discussions right now to uh, expedite the uh, the um, uh, our our fleet, uh, so to speak, because we're joining a fleet program. Once we order over two, we order uh, we become a part of their fleet uh, organizations, and uh, and then they they then expedite uh, these machines uh, sooner than say a person that picks up one of them. Uh, so we haven't gotten a, a specific date as to could when be this winter. could very well yeah. be this winter. Yeah. Um, and, and because of the production, uh, the, the, the production um, costs uh, and the, uh, obviously the pandemic has is, is kind of slowed things down a little bit. Um, they, we've, we've had our pre-order in for quite some time. And definitely because we're working with Cambrian College's R&D, who is right on their hip, essentially, um, we, we look to, to have uh, winter offerings this winter. Well, that's the question I'm, I'm asking you is this, hypothetically speaking, assuming that you get these machines, yep. when you anticipate you might receive them? Uh, we could start, we could start uh, basically right away. If we got these machines- no, no, no. When, when, Assuming you were got funding for two machines, yep. what would be the delivery date for the machines to you? Approximately. Yeah, yep. they haven't given us that date. They just sent an email. So yep. it- so, they, so, okay, so, I mean, I'm supportive of the general proposition of the type of tourism you want to be in. Mm -hmm. and, and I applaud you for your presentation and the work that you've done. And you have my 100% support. But at the same time, I want to be realistic about this. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to get into this business. You want to do it for the, for the community. You want to do it for uh, a number of very valid reasons. My question is, you want funding for two machines, you're gonna to try to get additional funding from the other sources that you've indicated, FedNOR and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and assuming you get all of that done before the snow melts, mm -hmm. uh, at, where would you set up? Would you set up, if I wanted to go on that tour or mm -hmm. if someone was staying at my hotel or any of the hotels in town or uh, from out of town, they would get in touch with you, I assume, by, mm -hmm. by email or otherwise, and then you're going to pick them up or they're going to meet you somewhere in order to get the uh, tour, if you will, mm -hmm. social or otherwise. Where will you be setting up? Do you have any arrangement with any uh, entity of some kind, whether it's uh, Hiawatha and so on, that you can operate out of that area? That's my question. Yeah, currently we uh, obviously we know that the, 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 the trail system here is quite vast. Uh, we could meet them at a, at a trailhead or a point of, uh, you know, uh, where they can meet us, uh, you know, at a parking lot, essentially. We've been doing all of our tours one-offs. So essentially, we've been, uh, we've been taking booking orders and, and uh, meeting them in various different locations. They oftentimes bring their own vehicle. To, uh, and so like if it's going to, like say we're doing kayaking on, on Superior, uh, we, we meet Let, them. Let's stay with the snow machines. The kayaking and so on, I can understand, you know, being able to do it that way. But sure. you're looking at going through trails. You're looking at areas where there's charging stations. So you have to have a pretty definite kind of arrangement yeah. to deal with the issues of operational uh, matters. Sure. So do you have that available to you at this point? Not at this point, and but if, uh, and if and if not, when might that reasonably sure. be expected? Well, uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to uh, to uh, ask uh, Lawrence uh, to see if uh, if if the we can sit down with the board or we can have a presentation with uh, Kinsman Board to uh, to um, showcase this unique op opportunity for them as well uh, and what and what they've been doing all throughout the uh, the time that they've been doing for what hundred over hundred years. Um, I believe that it's important for us to be able to partner with uh, with some strong partners as well, so that it helps us, uh, you know, uh, you know, make this as 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 legitimate as, as possible. Um, I think that that would be uh, an uh, an awesome opportunity if we can get get that. And if they if we did have a seat a sit down, let's just say next week with them and say like this is all we need. We don't in fact even need the charge ports right now. We will charge them before we come. And then we could just uh, set off from, you know, we can park our trailer potentially at the, 
at, at the highlands and then uh, roll them out of the trailer and and go just down the road in order to hit the uh, the beginning of the trail. That to me would be a, a great opportunity for us to do that. And also, I'd like to just add too, like we're not looking right now to do multi-day tours. We're our program is like two to three hours potentially an afternoon, so it's not something that we're gonna really be. Um, it's not going to be in, imminent that we need to make sure we have a charge port on site because mm -hmm. uh, we can bring our machines uh, char charged, ready to go with our snow snowshoes because our program is Indigenous culture sharing. Um, the, the machine is to bring people who maybe don't have the opportunity to get out in nature. It's for us to share. It's for us to learn. They're going to get off. They're going to learn how to make a fire. They're going to to learn the teachings and the about the people um, of this area and uh, and I think that's really what we're focusing on is doing that and not like let's try to get as far as we can um, you know to to go how far these batteries will go because mm -hmm. that's not I'm, uh, I'm, I'm with you on that I just want to know if you if you had the funding today yeah or a promise of funding mm -hmm. you still have things that you have to iron out in order to get into business is that fair Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to help you things. here. I'm yeah. trying to help you here. I'm no, absolutely. Thank you very much, Joseph. I, we do appreciate you, uh, you bringing that, uh, you know, cause I, cause I think that that's important to note is that, um, is that if we get the funding right now, then we have money in hand to be able to use that to leverage that money then to uh, to go and and say we got the support of Sault Ste. Marie's uh, tourism uh, and the board that that we uh, you know for the TDF fund um, so we got that so it's like a big check mark then they then will say okay good you're golden we're going to help you support that by giving you additional money um, and that's and, and through all of that we we then can you know potentially if we if we had enough money we we could potentially look to uh, to rent a place that's central that's accessible to the, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if, if the Kingsman want a, a rental or whatever, we can look at doing that. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of opportunities once you have some money. But you could, you could understand my concern and it may be the concern of, of the public as well. If we approve the $47,000 mm -hmm. and then you can't move forward because you can't get a location, you can't get additional funding, that creates a problem for us for spending public money. So I'm just wondering, I, do you I, need a location to access trails? This is well, one you need it. I think it, with all due respect, I think you need a location, the kind of business you want to get into in terms of meeting people or putting them in, a, in, in the experience that you want to provide them. You have to have an area that you're going to be into in order to do that, whether it's Batchawana, whether it's the Highlands, whatever place it is. Right now, we, we're homeless, I guess is the best way to put it. We want we want the flexibility to move to different locations uh, because if we are asked to go to Batchawana, we we don't want to have to say, well, sorry, we can't do that. We want to be able to have a mobile unit so that we can actually go to different places and not wear out one area. So we want to be able to spread it out as well. Um, I understand what you're saying uh, in terms of like uh, being able to point to a certain area. If we uh, if, if we have one particular area that they're housed, we'll we'll make that as our primary uh, location, and then we can. Yeah, do you see what I mean? Uh, we like, we like you to be, we, we'd like you to be close to Sault Ste. Marie because we want to give benefit to the city. Oh, of Oh no Sault doubt, Marie. and we want to be close to Sault Ste. Marie, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, and and the trail system is all over Sault Ste. Marie, and we definitely want to be a part of it because you you've been so uh, supportive to us in the past. Yes, Kelly. Well, a lot of my questions have been answered along the way, so thank you very much. I I want to just say congratulations. Um, I guess I'm just based on what um, Joe's uh, speaking of, what is your target market? Uh, who are you hoping to go after? And are you looking to expand on that? Um, and I'm coming from the sleep in hotels, so I'm in hospitality and tourism. Right. Um, so visitor traffic is really important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people looking for an eco eco-cultural um, tour. Uh, so people are trying to find ways to get outside and be sustainable. I think it's a different market than the snowmobile market. Uh, people who maybe always kind of wanted to get out there and uh, are, were not able to. Um, I think that's it's a new kind of market with uh, uh, people traveling and wanting to explore the outdoors and doing it in a, in a way that's sustainable. And so to Joe's uh, point, if you had a visitor from outside of Sault Ste. Marie contact you now, 
um, to arrange um, the snowmobile tour, um, how would you handle that um, that call? How would yeah, you make so, the arrangement? Yeah, all the bookings go through me, and I I see what people are looking for, and uh, so then and then we we make a plan of uh, you know the date and um, time and where we're meeting and what to expect. And there's usually a lot of like conversation back and forth, either through email or through on the phone. Um, and then we, uh, we have our uh, online waivers and, you know, we have a what to expect, what to bring, um, all sorts of things. Yeah, we, we have a $5, a $5 million liability insurance as well, which uh, accommodates uh, a lot of different things. We, uh, we, we definitely want to make sure that it's a custom experience for people so they don't feel like they're being just kind of churned out. And it's like, okay, we got a we got a thing going out at this particular time and just jump on if you want to. And you know, we want to make it custom for people because really for, for us as a as an indigenous business, we are uh, we are very uh, and and just in, in general, we want to be able to have that user experience being top of mind. I mean, that is to us. Um, you know, making a ton of money or whatever is not really the, the most important. Obviously, it's, it's important, but it's not the most important. It's uh, it's 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 to to provide that quality experience, just like uh, you know the sleep sleep in, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I, I feel you. It's a it's a personalized experience based on what the wishes or wants or outcomes um, the customer is asking for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's not a cookie cutter approach. No, every call no, no. is different. If you ask anybody, experience is different. Yeah, and if you ask anybody who's taken our tours, everything is is completely unique. I don't think that many people want to hug the tour guides at the end of of you know of uh, of the tours, but we get that all the time. <laughs> you know, and obviously because of your restrictions, we we're like, ah, oh, we'd like to do it, but you know, Go hey, ahead. how about a uh, you know? And uh, but they're just like they're really moved by the experience. A lot of them uh, even you know do a, a huge amount of of, uh, of reflection afterwards, and they they let us know that. That there, that there is a, a real remarkable difference in terms of the way that they treat the uh, the land afterwards. And with meeting people where they're at, some people are asking for more. Um, so we do bring in local uh, elders of the area. We bring in uh, uh, children of Shingwak, uh, board members mm -hmm. who actually attended the school. And sometimes it's us sitting around the fire talking and they're asking questions. So that's a really big part of like meeting people where they're at and that's part of our tour. So they can have, you know, just a little bit or they can have more if that's what they're uh, looking to do um, so that's really important and then the back end part of it you know I send an invoice um, and they pay <laughs> for, for sure no, yeah that's really great um, I mean obviously the, there's a huge educational component and uh, you know connecting with with Algoma University and Sioux College and uh, the the school boards as well is, is huge but that's not to say that we can't educate our visitors just the same way um, absolutely yeah, no, that's amazing. Um, that's really great. And thanks for sharing that. Um, the question I had was about, uh, sorry, another question I had was about the charging stations and maybe the timeline where um, Taiga thinks that they'll be able to install those in our community and how many they would be installing. Um, this is a conversation that we're actually, we were, uh, uh, Cambrian's R&D has, uh, has gotten in, uh, in touch with Taiga and they're swamped right now. They, uh, they want to have a conversation with us when they can uh, get uh, the high level. Uh, uh, Sam, actually Samuel Brunel, uh, Bruno, I meant, he is uh, the, one of the co-founders. He was the one that was on uh, the, the Zoom call with, uh, with the rep representative to uh, EBB with uh, last uh, November. And uh, he wants to also be on the call, but because he's, you know, he, he, they're busy, just essentially just kind of keeping up with the demand. Um, they, um, they're looking to have conversations like meaningful conversations in regards to charging stations in regards to uh, this, this new, this new infrastructure that they're, they're, they're uh, putting out kind of like Tesla would uh, put out. Uh, we want to be able to have potentially some stakeholders in the area, potentially look at getting funding to get these charging stations placed onto say hotels, motels, uh, restaurants, things of that nature. So that when we, when we can grow this, uh, we would do it in a, in a way in which uh, it seems very organic because it, all the charging uh, facilities are there. Obviously, you can utilize some of the charging stations that are currently here, uh, as well as anybody's house. You know, you can certainly tap into that um, for overnight uh, charging or 
or within just a few hours of charging. Um, so definitely getting those DC stations are, are, uh, are kind of a uh, top of mind for uh, Tyga right now and just getting them, uh, you know, you can see nationwide. So right now it's unknown um, is what I'm hearing, but it wouldn't prevent you from no, getting started necessary. tomorrow. No, no. If we want to start tomorrow, if you got it, if they said, okay, so you got the money. Okay. We're going to send it to you. Right. Okay, we're we're sending two to you now, and then we'll send two to you in a, another couple of weeks. We'd be like, okay, let's let's do it. We uh, we can take delivery <clears throat> on them. We can transport them. We can go to the uh, to the trails. We can do all sorts of things. And actually, because they're they they have no emissions and they're very very quiet, uh, you're not going to be disturbing a lot of the, the homeowners around the areas and and the wildlife. One obviously major importance is that. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for us to uh, to to do this in in areas that would not normally accept regular snowmobiles, right? Right. Uh, Conrad has his hand up. Do you mind uh, if we uh, or there's probably a comment as to what you're saying, Kelly? Sure, go ahead. Okay. I just wanted to uh, uh, mention that uh, you know this model that we have here with uh, uh, Brad and Cora and Thrive Tours is a very portable, very flexible very moldable model and we understand there's some challenges and I thank Joe for and the uh, group for bringing up those challenges because I need to know those challenges when I go about other product other product development in across Ontario but uh, I think you know uh, facing these challenges and reaching out to different communities whether it's Brad or myself and he can't solve it I reach out to different levels of government to get the uh, um, some responses so that we can start to attract some of the issues that have been plaguing the north uh, with regards to tourism and uh, that we do need to solve to create the traffic and a good example is uh, uh, how do we treat the flexibility with the motels like the delta the uh, uh, you know sleep and uh, the super eight you know and i think if uh, amanda makes all that uh, they can offer packages at whatever price point they want but uh, that it, i think uh, we want price points to be accessible to all of the motel units and i think there should be a partnership drawn up of uh, packages and price price range that we can have but i think all those problems are going to be solved it's just getting off the ground and uh, test marketing the project and uh, my, my role is to make sure that uh, I can assist them and support them uh, both provincially and nationally to make this a uh, success. And I think with the partnership of Sault Ste. Marie, I wanna, I wanna thank you for coming on board because the, one of the goals that we got from the Premier and from the Minister of uh, Indigenous Development is that we're to uh, have collaborative with communities. And I understand Joe saying that we want stuff to happen in the Sioux. Well, it's gonna happen in the Sioux. And uh, I think it's going to be the Sioux and area that's going to be the beneficiaries of a, a nice new product uh, model. Thank and you. To dovetail on that, uh, Conrad, thank you for, uh, for, for saying that, uh, is that we moved to the Sioux for a reason. We actually moved our whole family here to the Sioux from Sudbury uh, because we believed in what the Sioux was doing. Um, we are, uh, we've bought in and we, uh, we are here permanently. We believe that this is the area to do it in and it's no other area. Obviously we, you know, if we have time to be able to take, uh, you know, uh, people that are, you know, uh, or take um, uh, tours in, in different areas, we will, but we're going to primarily focus on Sioux in the area because we believe that uh, what you've been doing in the past uh, is, is, uh, is, is on brand for us. And we believe that what we're doing here is going to be on brand for you. So that's why we're, we're suggesting this. Yes, Joe. Let me ask you a question. Hypothetically speaking, if the resolution by the uh, tourism board was that we support Brad and Amanda in their, in their idea of getting into this business and we uh, set aside and we'll fund them to the tune of $47,000, whatever it is there. Uh, and uh, that uh, you have two or three weeks to work out some of the issues that you obviously have to address mm -hmm. and come back to us and give us some, you know, solid information as to whether or not you were able to work something out with the, uh, the uh, Hiawatha, whether you were able to work out for the uh, ordering of these uh, snow machines and when they might come in and whether or not you were able to get the charging stations and so forth. In other words, uh, we make a commitment to you on the basis that you can get this thing off the ground. You think that would be fair? 
Yeah, I don't, I don't see any uh, any reason why we don't think that that's fair. Um, I'd we, go we, to Fednor with that, saying we've got Tourism Sault Saint Marie that's on board with us. Absolutely. Give us the additional money so we can order six of them at one time. Yeah, I agree uh, because we're going to be putting down our money in order to. It's a thousand dollar pre order, so we're putting down our money in order to pre order those. Uh, in the simple fact that we believe in we believe in ourselves and we believe in you guys and we believe in in, in this uh, actually taking off. And I was sorry, Joe, I think further to that, um, with regards to the TDF, they also have to put out their money for it and then submit the receipts back sure. to Tourism Sault Ste. Marie as well. Uh, so we can look at what types of conditions we would want to put into the resolution on that as well. Of course. Yeah. I just want to add something that Joe asked the question to take along what Joe was thinking here. Have you guys put forth? Uh, an application to NOHFC or FedNOR or anything at this point? Um, NOHFC, we are doing that right now. And um, we are looking at other places as well to put an application. Yeah, there's also there's also a, a, um, a, a, a development or sorry, a, a funding agent from, uh, uh, well, it's a First Nations in particular funding agent called Wabatech, and they do get their money from the uh, from the the government as well, and and it's kind of like they have a certain uh, uh, repayment. Uh, with their um, their funding is is a little different than uh, than NOHFC, but we definitely want to tap into Ed, uh, Fed both Fed nor and NOHFC because the ask uh, could be uh, that we that we get uh, multiple funding in order to to make this uh, really successful. Richard? Before can I before we leave this, can Absolutely. I just can I just might suggest that you might when you're looking at a jumping off place, you look at search mount. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why is because search mount you can go in four different directions. Assuming the trail system is is, is what I I rec what I wrote on a long time ago. You can go north to you can go to north to halfway haven, you can go down to Gooley, and so you're going to pass the Robertson Cliffs. You can go down to back down to Sault Ste. Marie, which brings you to Kinsman Park, and then you can go east, which would bring you to Bruce Mine. So you've got in the search mount area, you can go in four different directions. So you might they might give you a better opportunity to mm -hmm. give different rides to different people. So oh, absolutely, we we definitely want to talk with Search Mount. I, I don't know where they're at in terms of uh, in terms of full functionality and and. Uh, uh, but definitely uh, the, that uh, I've, I've been to SearchMod in the past and, and they were organized uh, quite well. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to tap into. Thank you. Okay, so we're, uh, Brad, Amanda, thank you very much for your presentation. Conrad, thank you for, for joining us today. Were there any other concerns from the board here or shall we move forward with um, our conversation? Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us here today, guys, and uh, all the best. Thank Absolutely. You thank you very much, everyone, for uh, for hearing what we had to say. Thank you. About Mopi. Congratulations again. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much. Kelly. Okay, um, discussion from the board. Uh, obviously the resolution that is in front of us is in the amount of, I lost it, but 47,300 uh, thereabouts. Uh, we can have conversations certainly around any conditions, Joe, that you would like to, that we would like to put into that. Uh, again, keeping in mind that they have to put out the money first and we have to receive the receipts back uh, before issuing the money. So we can put any additional conditions into there. Uh, was, was there anything, Joe, that, that you wanted to see specifically that way? And we can also talk about a, a lower amount. We don't have to go back with the full amount if we don't feel comfortable with that. Uh, I think there's a lot of loose ends that have to be tied down by the applicants. I'm supportive of the concept and the idea of what they are trying to achieve. Uh, and I don't want to uh, beat down their enthusiasm. I, I, I really do think that this ultimately has some 
benefit to the community. Uh, my feeling, and it's my feeling, is to say that we approve the budget of that amount in principle, subject to them coming back to us with some definite plans as to how they're going to get this thing off the ground from a business perspective. I don't think there's a business plan right now. That's my concern. There's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of interest in expanding their uh, eco-based tourism plan, but how that's going to be achieved, where, under what circumstances, under what capital costs and so forth, that's all missing. And uh, you can't replace a good business plan with enthusiasm. Uh, a good business plan will, will prosper if there's enthusiasm, but right now they don't have one. So my, uh, my suggestion, and it's only a suggestion, is that we approve uh, the, uh, the amount that they request subject to a re review of a business plan and what they were able to find out and how this could be achieved and come back to us in a couple of three weeks. And they were agreeable to do that. Uh, Alana, is there something that you can add with regards to the business plan that you would have seen through Tourism to St. Marie from N1? What, what I'd have to do is ask Brad and Amanda if um, we have permission to share that, that would be shared as a public document. So we have to, um, in this forum, I'm not sure how to share it. I'd have to talk to them and with their permission, we'll be able to, to share that with everyone. Okay, so there there is some type of documentation that's, that's more than just an enthusiasm because Joe, I, I certainly understand where you're coming from with that. Uh, Kelly, you had something? I was just going to say, Alana, I thought you said there was a business plan attached. We haven't seen it yet. Can we talk about it? So, yeah, we're good. And Nick? Uh, I was just wondering if they were planning on proceeding with only two vehicles um, if they didn't get the funding from NOHFC or FEDNOR. Is there something, I mean, to have two I, I didn't want to jump in. I know we have a lot on the table here and a lot's been discussed, but I mean, to only have two to start the operation, what, do, what are the logistics on that? Somebody's riding as the guide and then two people can ride on the other one. Um, I would think that we would want to do something contingent on, could they use our pre-approval of 47,000 to leverage an agreement with NOHFC to get six? Because I mean, really that's two, I don't know how you, how you operate with just the two. Um, six would be would be a, a definitely the, the, the marker they would want to hit with that. And I love the enthusiasm too, and the project sounds great and they're they're very knowledgeable, but and I'm not too worried about the home base, Joe, myself. Like I just did a, a tour in Colorado or in Arizona on Kayak to Colorado, and they set you up at different spots and they drop you off with their asset. Um, the kayaks at certain spots and they tell you where to go and we found it to be uh, pretty cool that we could pick where we want it to, to be um, but that would be my concern is just if they're going to proceed with just two I, I don't know how like how many tours can they operate with with just a pair of them um, that was I didn't know if there was something that we could write in that might be contingent on uh, on more funding I, I think what I'm hearing from the board right now is that we really want to see some more uh, information before we we vote on a resolution on this would that be a fair statement from the yeah okay so I think uh, if we have any other questions Alana if we can go back to to Brad and Amanda with perhaps Nick's question there on on how many tours they can they can do or what their their plan is that way for NOHFC if you could ask them about the uh, the business plan and whether or not that's that's shareable to give us some more information and then we'll put this back on the agenda for uh, the new year does that sound fair yes that does I'm just sorry I'm just making notes so I don't forget any of those points that you just said um, can I suggest a, a, a resolution uh, Madam Chair. You are more than welcome to, yes. Uh, I would simply move that the application be, uh, the consideration of the funding be deferred to a meeting to be set uh, by staff on receiving additional information.
So be it resolved that Tours and Sault Ste. Marie recommends uh, consideration of deferral of the application until uh, further questions can be answered. Okay, do I have a mover on, on that resolution? Don? Seconder? Joe? All in favor of uh, moving the consideration of the application until a later date? Motion carried. Okay, so up next, I believe we are now losing uh, Lawrence here and we are moving on to the application for the Beaver Freezer Marathon. Yes, so I have a, a conflict of interest here and I can either uh, provide some information or excuse myself uh, based on the board's wishes. Travis, you have further, further insight on it. Would you like Lawrence to provide information or excuse? Um, why don't I start with just a quick overview? Um, and then Lawrence, I think, I mean, it is an open meeting. You should sit in. You just don't have the opportunity to vote. Um, but uh, I'll get started. So we have 20 minutes remaining in today's meeting. We have a few other items to get through. So I'm going to kind of give a quick uh, synopsis here. So uh, for those of you, you know, obviously everybody's aware of Lawrence through his role on the board. Um, what you may not know is uh, Lawrence's experience, both as a racer and a, as an event organizer. So Lawrence uh, was an adventure uh, racer with Team Solomon, uh, Team Schick Extreme 3, uh, Team Subaru and Hall of Fiber. And he, is, he and his team have won over 100 events around the world. Uh, is, he is also a two-time Canadian champion and a one-time North American champion and has consistently finished top 10 in the, world, in the world in races such as Eco Challenge. Um, with over 10 years uh, of experience working in Canada's premier adventure racing outfit, Raid the North, Lawrence has designed over 100 race courses in Canada, varying from eight hours um, to six days in length. He has also organized adventure racing world championships in Newfoundland in 2004. Since his retirement in professional racing, Lawrence has since been working with television shows such as Boundless, Survivor Man, uh, and designing seven seasons of Man Tracker, where he was the chase supervisor. In his role, he was responsible for designing the geographical layout of each episode, uh, developing safety plans, uh, coordinating logistics, and, and filmed the prey as they were chased for two days through the wilderness. Uh, since then, uh, he's now a senior faculty member at Sioux College, where he's been teaching adventure recreation for the past 14 years. So that's a, a brief uh, overview of Lawrence's bio. Uh, and it, uh, uh, the reason why I provided that is I think it gives con good context to the, uh, the event that Lawrence is proposing uh, and the credibility of Lawrence as an organizer. So the, uh, the event uh, is called the Beaver Freezer. Uh, it's a winter marathon uh, whereby uh, participants have the opportunity to either uh, ski, fat bike, or run uh, 42 kilometers uh, through the Canadian wilderness, starting, uh, starting and uh, finishing at, at Hiawatha Highlands. Uh, the uh, train will cover frozen lakes, streams and trails and portages. Um, and uh, there'll be a number of uh, different rest stations and check-in stops, including uh, Trout Lake uh, and Hiawatha Highlands. And Lawrence, uh, Feel free to jump in if I've missed any of the check stations, but I believe that's it. Um, there's two at Trout Lake. The two at Trout Lake. Lake. Okay, thank you. And then for the first year in terms of projections, Lawrence is uh, expecting roughly two to 300 uh, competitors with the goal of 100 uh, visitors from out of town. He's partnered with uh, a number of organizations from Southern Ontario, including uh, Superfly Racing, uh, who many of you may be familiar with because uh, they host the Crank to Shield events here um, and Wilderness Traverse and Canadian uh, Adventure Racing Association. So in terms of uh, review as staff, we felt that that was very important because it gives direct access uh, into Southern Ontario market and the uh, um, right persona in terms of attracting people here for uh, winter adventure race. So we walked through uh, the volume valuation matrix uh, for events, uh, similar to ones that we had uh, walked through with the board previously. And uh, 
if you'll recall, uh, we go through the matrix and look at uh, items such as visitor days, out of town participants, opportunity for growth, reach of the event, economic impact, utilization of local services and attractions, or sorry, local services and attractions and suppliers. Uh, we provide uh, additional points for uh, events that are held during the low season, so January through March. Um, media exposure, uh, additional points for any event that's provincial exposure uh, and or national or international, and event frequency. So if it's a new event, um, then it's marked uh, higher than a, an event that is annual and maybe not as strong of an attractor. And we also align uh, additional scoring for those that align with our objectives and priorities. And obviously attracting more people during the slow winter months is one of those. So when we ranked, um, so in terms of ranking, the highest uh, scoring that you can get is 80 points. And through that ranking, that would lead to uh, a recommendation of roughly $20,000 in the event stream or more. Uh, the Beaver Freezer ranked um, at 58 points, uh, which is directly within our range of uh, $5,000 and above, but below $10,000. Uh, and the event itself has requested, just correct me if I'm wrong, is it 6,000? 6,300. Sorry, Lawrence, do you want to jump in there? I lost the number. What was this? this 6,200 is the amount that's, uh, that's requested um, from the event. And, and Lawrence, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to add at this point. Uh, just very briefly, uh, <clears throat> you can check out the website, beaverfreezer.com. Uh, Sioux College will be sponsoring the event as well, and we're going to be, uh, through Sioux College, they'll uh, have offered their full marketing uh, department to help market the event. I see it as a, uh, a yearly event, especially with the Sioux College partnership. We've integrated it into their classrooms. Uh, their contribution is going to be providing all volunteers and all competitors uh, a takeaway. So the goal being uh, make the volunteers really happy. You'll have a happy community that will want to put on this event every year. Uh, and then from there, we can grow the event because the volunteers are going to be the backbone uh, for this event, even though logistics are relatively uh, small. Um, we want to make sure everybody is happy. Sorry, can I ask what the dates of the event are? Sure, it's uh, March 6th, uh, it's a Sunday. Okay. Do we have any questions from the board with regards to the application, Nick? As a potential competitor, Lawrence, uh, as far as the running discipline goes, snow up to your waist. I mean, doesn't, there's nothing groomed, right? <laughs> well, historically, so I've been doing this race route for just over 20 some years. And on that day, <clears throat> it is pretty much uh, glare ice. Okay. So it's, it's so hard, clear. hard ice. Awesome. The portage routes between, there's only small sections that are actually on trail. The rest of it is on lakes and rivers. So the small sections in between are snow machine trails or portage routes in the summertime. And they're pretty rock hard, but they may be pretty soft. It's going to be weather dependent. The, uh, because it's weather dependent, you can change your discipline up to the night before. Cool. Don? I have a quick, just a quick question, Isaac, because I I don't have much knowledge about these things. Uh, but but is this uh, like I know it's a new event uh, for this area, but is this uh, like an event that like potentially could feed into like a bigger race? Like for for example, and I'll use next race this fall that was, you know, gathered points to race at a different bigger race. Is it the same kind of idea? It, it, it doesn't quite fall under any governing bodies. Adventure racing is uh, typically in uh, my background, which is it now has a governing body in Canada. They're providing my race insurance for this. So they will be promoting the event. <clears throat> will it lead to other events? Um, 
only through partnerships with other event organizers, which I'm working on. So I have two partnerships currently, and it can be a feeder event to them uh, as well. They can feed to me. Just a side note, Lawrence, we work with the uh, Canadian Adventure Racing Association as well from our side. They're awesome to work with. So, yeah. I think it's really exciting that we have another event uh, supporting our winter season, making Sault Ste. Marie a destination year round. That's our goal. Um, yeah, it's really exciting. We know Nick's race has been a super success and this one sounds uh, exciting as well. And uh, to bring two to 300 in the first year, that's really, really excellent. I don't have any questions per se. Be something that's piggybacks here with Bon Su to, to kind of breathe some life into Bon Su and have you know maybe outside experiences with Bon Su, or is it like because of the, the weather time? I think isn't Bon Su in February? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I do work with Bon Su through, through the college, uh, we always sponsor an event and, and run an event there. Um, I, we can certainly promote it uh, through Bon Su. Uh, but I would have to get in touch with the organizers there, but that's something to put on my list, Don. Thanks. Richard? I just, I just Googled uh, Beaver Freezer, <laughs> and there's a couple other events with the same name out in the States. So is there some, is that sort of some organization type of thing or what? <laughs> no, it's a, that's a university club. That That's what they named their race. So we're, we're hoping to... Uh, to overcome them on the Google search. If you can imagine when Mantracker came out, my mother was one of the first people to Google mantracker.com and she did not like what she saw <laughs> at all. <laughs> and was wondering what type of business are you getting into, Lawrence? But <clears throat> I remember the day when mantracker.ca became number one on Google searches. Okay, so um, if there's no other questions or comments at this time, if we were to look at a resolution um, with regards to the Beaver Freezer Marathon, uh, be it resolved that Tourism Sault Ste. Marie recommend a $6,200 contribution to the tourism from the through the Tourism Development Fund conferences and special events stream to support the Beaver Freezer Marathon to be held March 6, 2022 and that a report be submitted to city council for consideration and approval. Do I have a mover, Don? And a seconder, Nick? And uh, all in favor, aside from Lawrence? Okay, motion carried. Uh, so we are 10 to two here and we do still have a couple of items on the agenda. Uh, open discussion circling back on the downtown trolley. So last meeting, we did have a resolution that we supported the concept of. Uh, however, we weren't loving the financial ask on it. Uh, Travis, was there anything further that you wanted to bring forward with the trolley from last time for us to discuss on this? Yes. Um, so the board uh, did pass a resolution. Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, we've been asked to clarify uh, a couple items from it. So uh, if you don't mind, Beverly, I'll read uh, the original resolution as passed, and then I can describe uh, what we're looking for. Yes, thank so you, Travis. The resolution is, be it resolved that the Board of Tourism Sault Ste. Marie is in support of the concept of the downtown trolley as a priority. However, are unable to commit to the financial ask of $774,000. The request um, that came about was to clarify whether or not Tourism Sault Ste. Marie is willing to provide uh, any type of financial support uh, for the trolley at this point. So I'd like to clarify that with the board. Can I speak to that, Madam Chair? Yes, please do, Joe. Uh, I mean, at this point in time, it looks like a presentation was made. Uh, we weren't, we expressed our view that we had 
didn't have the money for that particular uh, venture. Uh, they were looking at Tourism Sault Ste. Marie to be 100% responsible. They had not gone out to seek private uh, industry to try to get it. They, they had three uh, options, all of which started at a million dollars plus, plus, plus. And it was going to be for a short term. Uh, it, it wasn't a permanent uh, matter that they wanted to get into. So given the information that we had, we had really no other options but to do what uh, what we did. If there is another proposal they want to come up with, let them come back to us. Let them come back to us with the, with an amended proposal. I I would be in agreement with with Joe on this. I mean, it it really was a a one hundred percent ask over a three year with no longevity as to to what it would be or transpire like after that. Uh, I don't believe that the sentiment of the board was that we're, we're against this or anything like that, but it, it is very loose and, and open-ended at this point. So um, for clarity, because this is what I'm trying to seek uh, from other partners. Uh, so at this point, uh, the board would be unwilling to, to say whether or not there is any uh, funds that they would be willing to allocate. And in order to do so, they would need um, staff essentially, or you know, I think it was Brent Lamming at the time, to come back with a very specific dollar value ask, um, or is the board willing to undertake a presentation uh, and say, you know, there is some room here for us to contribute. And I'll remind the board that um, city staff are, are presenting this um, through a committee uh, to, to try to determine what, uh, what support there is for the trolley. And that's why we're being asked to come back. Can I speak to that again, Madam Chair? And I don't wanna, yeah. It, it just seems to me that the, the message that was given to Mr. Lamming is that he had made a proposal. That proposal had three items that they had considered, all of which was an all or nothing proposition. So based upon the presentation that was made, the information that was provided to the board or the lack thereof in terms of alternatives, there were no alternatives given to us. So supposedly Mr. Lamming and the committee considered other alternatives uh, but didn't present them to us. I don't have that information and the board doesn't have that information to come back with an alternative proposition. If I had to provide an alternative proposition to this board for consideration would be to seek private industry to see what they could do at what price, ask for proposals of the public. But that wasn't even done by Mr. Lamming and the committee. I mean, I don't want to debate this matter in the air uh, without any other propositions or proposal by the committee. Uh, they put, at one point they had talked about going out to the public and see if there was a public proposal to support a trolley system to contract out. Say for example, Hollywood Limousine at one point had considered putting in a proposal. I'd say nothing more. Now, Joe, driver's seat was a part of the the um, presentation. Are you talking about something different than that? Yes, I am. A, a Hollywood limousine service at one time uh, had shown an interest in coming up with a proposal based upon the fact that they were being hired to run people to and from the uh, uh, cruise ships that were coming into town, and they had done tours with a number of tourist, tourism groups to St. Joe's Island and so forth. So when the idea of a trolley came up and it was given some serious consideration once they decided to, to shut down the bus terminal, uh, then I thought that they were gonna go out and seek you know, industry in, interest uh, in perhaps uh, contracting it out to a third party but we didn't hear anything uh, from that in terms of local. 
and, and one unit. That was the other thing too, with one vehicle. Anyways, so uh, I think it's unfair for this board to put out a proposal to the committee when they didn't give us any proposals other than the, the options that we heard. So, so Travis, I got to ask is, is <laughs> were they looking, was this committee looking to, to say, yeah, we're, we would agree to give $30,000 to this thing? Is that, is that, that's is that correct? Expecting? Yeah. Richard, I think uh, they haven't looked at other proposals because they're trying to understand what, if any, funds could come from tourism to St. Marie. So, you know, it would be, um, you know, putting it out there, um, you know, assuming it could be advanced, what, if anything, uh, in terms of financial commitment, would tourism to St. Marie be willing to make? Well, here I'm with Joe in the sense that when Tom came looking for money for the plaza, he had a very specific ask saying, okay, I need this much money because I'm cobbling together funding for the plaza, right? I, I don't feel that we got that presentation for the bus. And, and it feels like they're trying to punt it to us saying, okay, well, well, tell me what you can give us and then we'll kind of go hunting around different envelopes to say, okay, well, these guys are going to give us this and these guys are going to give us that. To me, that doesn't make for a very sustainable project long term and I think that if we're going to seriously consider a trolley there has to be you know a, a solid long-term business plan right and I know from watching some of the council notes I know that they're talking about uh, doing a bus to Hiawatha like we did, did a bus to um, Point to Shane's I, I don't know if that could be just a part of that discussion I, I don't know right but I mean at this point you know, they just said we need this much money if we're going to have a bus and we're going to try for a couple of years and it's going to be all this much money and quite frankly i mean if i could be blunt it, it was a lazy presentation you know there was didn't really lack much in details other than you know okay we put out a rfi and this is what we got what do you think well what i think we told them i think we're pretty clear in what we told them you know if they're looking for something specific to put together a plan then I, I think that that would require a new presentation to come to this board to say, hey, here's the plan and here's the kind of support that we're looking for you, from you guys. Good. Thanks, Doc. Have, have we clarified anything here, Travis? I, I, I think at the end of the day, we as a board, again, it, we, we appreciate the concept of it, but to, to commit a blanket amount without something more firm from the committee coming forward, I think leaves us in a, in a difficult spot. Certainly, yeah, and I appreciate that. I'll bring, uh, I'll bring the message back and I suspect uh, um, there's a good chance that uh, we'll hear the trolley again at, at one of these meetings. Okay. I, I think too, and maybe just to relay this back to that committee is that what is the business plan? Who like, is it going to be city run? Is it like, what, how many years is the pilot going to be? You know, what are the ongoing costs? That sort of thing. Cause you know, it, it may lead to this multi, another project that is a multi-year commitment um, that we may be looking at. So I, I think there's a lot that was left out. It was basically just telling us about what the RFI came back with, but really, uh, very little substance beyond that. And thanks, Celia. And Joe, just, uh, I guess it's kind of immaterial at this point, but uh, Hollywood was reached out uh, and requested, uh, you know, to see whether or not they would provide an RFI and they did, did not respond. Well, that would have been nice to know. And we'd like to know what the proposal was that, uh, that was sought. I mean, if it was, I mean, apples and oranges. Uh, there may be other people who might be interested. Uh, I don't know if there was a public publication or they went out to other people. I, I have no idea. Uh, all I know is what I heard from Mr. Lammy. And, you know, to, to blow a, a whole budget, I mean, Think about this. 
you know, we, we know what we get in one year. They wanted us to blow that and then some in order to have a trolley. But does that make sense? I mean, on the face of it, it's absurd to ask us for a million dollars or $750,000, but that's our whole budget. <laughs> Think about that. So, you know, it's bizarre. I, I, I'll leave it at that. Okay. I think, uh, I think that wraps the discussion on the open trolley. Uh, we have a next meeting date set of January the 20th for 2022. If everyone could mark that on the calendar. Uh, was there anything further that anyone from the board wanted to, to bring forward as open discussion? Nope. Okay, do I have a mover to adjourn the meeting? John? And a seconder, Ilya, and uh, all in favor? <laughs> Excellent, thank you everyone and uh, happy holidays and all the best into 2022. Merry Thanks, Christmas everyone. to everyone. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas happy to everyone. holidays guys. Take care. Happy holidays. Take care.